repeal. So thank you, Chair. Thank you. Senator Waters. Thanks, Chair. Hello again, folks. Uh, a few questions. Have we got some folk at the table that could answer questions about the carbon effects of changes to Queensland vegetation protection laws? Great. Thank yep. you, Ms Thompson. Um, so as you may be aware, the Queensland Government has recently um, watered down those vegetation management laws, took, taken away regrowth protection, weakened the riparian protection, um, in fact stalled prosecutions. A number of a number of changes have been made. The estimate is that that will mean that there's about 300,000 to 750,000 hectares that is now able to be cleared. Is your department tracking <coughs> what that means for our national emissions? So, so Senator, um, we basically look at uh, land clearing and the effect on emissions in, in two ways. We look at it for the purposes of the national inventory, which we prepare every year, uh, and my colleagues in, in another area of the department also look at what we project the impact will be going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the difficulties of looking at the impact of um, things like the Queensland land clearing changes is that in order to know the actual effect of a change like that, you also have to know what would have been cleared in the first place, if I can put it that way. So, so we can look at having um, some estimates of what uh, the impact would be, but, but actually um, because we don't know what would have happened uh, in the alternative scenario, if you like, it, it is actually quite difficult to get a, a firm figure for all of that. Um, but I might ask my colleague, um, Mr Sturgis, to come to the table and he might be able to provide us with some further assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Rob Sturdis. I'm the Assistant Secretary of the National Inventory Systems and International Reporting Branch. So uh, as Ms Thompson was indicating, the, um, the National Inventory uh, Systems are set up to monitor uh, the amount of uh, clearing of land across the country on an annual basis. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, latest inventory uh, which was published uh, and submitted to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change um, in April last year, uh, reported the, the total amount of land clearing observed using the, our assessment of the satellite imagery uh, for the year 2011. Uh, in April uh, this year, we will update that report uh, and the submission to the UN will cover the uh, calendar year 2012. So um, at, this, at this point, um, the mm. inventory does not have any uh, real information in relation mm. to the effect of the changes in the mm. uh, vegetation management laws in Queensland. Mm. Um, but as a matter of course, the inventory will monitor those effects uh, through, well, they will monitor the, the aggregate clearing across Queensland um, um, through that process. Um, mm. uh, the question of attribution of uh, outcomes to changes in regulation or to other effect factors that might affect uh, the amount of clearing going on, such as prices in the economy. I mean, that's a, a, it's a more complicated question, mm. but of course the total uh, clearing activity um, across the country will be monitored uh, through the National Inventory. Okay. Um, thank you. I want to come to two aspects of that. Given that the um, timeframes that you're currently reporting on relate to our last um, emissions target plus eight, were the figures that you were able to provide in relation to land clearing, um, did they alter in any way the nation's ability to meet that target? Or were they tracking as expected? Oh, well, um, the, the commitment period for the first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol relates to the period 2008, 2012. Mm, that's my point. And you put in figures for 2011, and you'll soon be doing figures for 2012. Yes. Are the land uh, averted emissions from <coughs> retention tracking as was predicted? Are we on track to have met that 8 per cent target oh, in yes. terms of the land sector? Yes. Um, so the, uh, <coughs> the latest estimates of tracking and progress against that commitment period target uh, are recorded in the publication of our quarterly national inventory, uh, last published on the 5th of February. Uh, and the answer is uh, yes, we, the, the, we are, the nation is tracking towards that commitment, okay. yes. 
I want it. Saying, uh, my understanding is that the latest quarterly figures show that we're tracking to at 104% of the 1990 Great. base, and the target is, of course, 108%. Mm. So, so we do have um, a fair bit of, of, of room between the 104 and the 108. So we can do better if we apply ourselves. Sounds like we should continue to do that, but that's not a matter for, for you folk. Um, in terms of the second aspect that you mentioned, the, the role of projections, Perhaps can one yeah, of you talk to me about how you factor in those changed. legislative changes to your yeah, projections? Or if you do? So, so, so Senator, we might, um, we might also want um, colleagues to come to the table who work more particularly on projections. Okay. Um, so, so, of course, um, the projection for the land clearing number would look at the impact of um, things like legislative changes because um, they are one of the things that, that needs to be considered in that context. Um, I think what Mr Sturgis is partly alluding to is that um, the, the actual um, data that we source from remote imagery for these sorts of changes uh, isn't currently available. So, so at the moment what we do is we look at um, an estimation that's based on things like um, responses to uh, terms of trade uh, because we find that that farmers often clear their land in response to signals from, from international commodity prices. But what we're saying in this case is actually um, uh, the, the actual um, data that we use from things like our remote sensing efforts, which is actually using satellite data and, and vegetation mapping to inform the inventory, are, are still to come. And of course, that further information uh, will be quite important for the projection going forward because the projection uses uh, where it can, the most recent inventory update data. But um, I don't know if oh, colleagues yeah. want Look, to Thank you. Anything. I guess I'm particularly interested in how you take account of the fact that there's possibly 750,000 hectares of land that was protected three months ago that is now able to be cleared and how, how that shapes well, your so, response so to I'll, I'll take planning. That. Senator, when we update um, our projections, the last projections that were published um, there were some projections published with the release of the Green Paper in uh, early December, uh, um, mid-December. They, um, uh, they, they reflect modelling that was undertaken with Treasury uh, and, um, and um, our numbers that came from the department um, that were prepared uh, earlier in, uh, in the middle of, around the middle of last year um, with some updates around particularly the carryover or the amount of um, um, uh, uh, the extent to which we're, uh, Australia is um, exceeding its target in the first commitment period. As we update um, projections and, um, and publish them through the government, um, uh, um, we do uh, sit down and not only look at all the economic factors, but look at any significant changes in policy that might change the target or the, the extent to which uh, emissions would otherwise, otherwise um, increase without policies mm. in place. But at this stage, we, um, the department does not have, nor has it published, uh, um, an official, its own uh, estimate through government of the exact effect of the emissions that might happen from that change in policy. Because but it would be part involved. of our consideration in updating our projections. Okay, thank you. Well, look, I'll ask about that in future estimates then, because it's obviously a massive swathe of land, um, which is of crucial importance to factor into um, planning. Um, okay, I want to ask now, has, have the words climate change been removed from the department's website? Uh, I'd be very surprised. Uh, uh, not, not, that I'm, not that I'm aware of. Okay, look, we um, had some reports to that, to that effect and I've had a bit of a look and I can find one reference to climate change on the front page of the website that then takes you to an entirely separate website. So I'm interested in whether, to your knowledge, any departmental employees have been told to refrain from using the term climate change? It's one of the outcome responsibilities uh, of the department, of the minister and the department, Senator. So uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of that and I'll, I'll take that on notice. But, okay, well, uh, thank you. If you could take on notice whether there's been any instruction or directive or suggestion or what have you uh, uh, to change uh, uh, the terminology yeah. used. Yeah, yes, Senator, but I, I'd be very surprised. Thank you. Well, so would we all, but let's, let's see. Thank you for looking into it further. 
Uh, I want to ask now about the um, Galilee Basin coal deposits and the recent approvals there of mega coal mines in the Galilee, um, as well as, frankly, coal mines everywhere else. Is your section advising the minister of the climate impacts of the scale of this sort of coal mining and export and of the fact that keeping that coal in the ground in the Galilee is a huge opportunity to protect Australia from the impacts of further extreme weather events and bushfires and um, constraints on agricultural productivity and things that I would think we're all concerned about. Is anybody advising the minister on that? We provide a range of advice uh, to the minister on the, on the specific content. Uh, a lot of that would be deliberative, uh, largely deliberative material, Senator. Um, I don't quite know what you mean by that. Well, we don't normally uh, talk about the content of, uh, of our advice. Sure. Uh, but we, we, we provide advice across a wide range of climate, climate relevant, climate change relevant material. Okay, including on that matter? Uh, I, 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 that would be going to the specific content of the advice that we would be providing to the minister. Well, I'd argue uh, it's Senator. going to its existence as opposed to its content. We, we provide advice to the minister around climate change policy, uh, but on, the, on that, not, not, I don't want to go into the specific content of all, all the elements of that. Uh, that would be going into the deliberative, into advice that we provide the government. For, uh, for its deliberative purposes or for, de for, deliber for deliberation. Why right. don't I assist you, Senator Waters, and uh, we might take that on notice, and if uh, Minister Hunt uh, feels that he can add to that answer, okay. we'll provide you with that Look, Thank you. I appreciate that you can't disclose the nature of the advice, but I, I am very interested as to whether anyone does turn their mind to that sort of um, policy approach and thinking and that you know the climate impacts of approving these mines and whether or not the minister's properly appraised of that information <coughs> and making his his calls about those mines so thank you um, can you advise me that whether when those coal mines are approved whether the emissions from the burning of that coal are considered in that approval process and whether or not the climate change impacts under the EPBC act are considered I, I, under the EPBC Act, mm -hmm. there are specific requirements uh, on the minister and, and us in relation to the the matters of national economic, uh, national environmental significance. Mm -hmm. That that I, I, I don't think that that's one of them, uh, Senator. I think you're right. <laughs> okay, so there's no climate consideration in the EPBC, uh, Act. the EPBC Act. Is there any consideration of the climate effect of the burning of the coal from those mines on domestic oh, I have decision to take that one makers? On notice, uh, Senator. If you could, I, I, again, I suspect the answer is no. What I'm trying to establish is how a government factors in the climate effects of these mega mines when making its decisions. And I'm keen to be reassured that there is some process or some person somewhere that does think about that, because my understanding is the national environmental laws don't require that, and nor do our um, national inventory targets, given that that's a scope three emission, but I'm really eager to be disavowed of that. Okay. Senator, the officers that are here at the table um, aren't responsible for administering the EPBC Act. Those officers will be here with you, um, I think, Secretary, from yep. uh, around 5 o'clock uh, or um, uh, 5.40, yeah, 5 I beg your pardon, this evening. Thank so you. if you're interested in the specifics of the Act itself and how it's applied, um, they would be best placed. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, I'm interested in also... Does your department advise around the potential to meet a 5% reduction target and the relevance of the approvals of those large coal mines in that context? Does somebody have that job? We don't generally relate those approvals to, to the climate change analysis, Senator. S sorry, can you repeat that? We don't generally relate the approvals of specific projects to our climate change analysis. Okay, so you don't look at the effect of approving mega coal mines in your climate work. Is that Senator, what you're saying? Perhaps if I could elaborate. Um, uh, 
uh, what the Secretary is talking about is the specific application of the Act and uh, the EPBC Act, which, um, as I said, it would be best placed to ask those officials who turn up later. Of course, um, uh, in preparing emissions projections, as we were talking about before, and those sorts of things, emissions that, um, uh, uh, that are Australia's under um, the frameworks under which we report, um, uh, we publish projections and the extent to which policies need to move to um, allow those projections to meet targets is one thing that um, uh, the government um, uh, does provide advice, uh, the department does provide advice to the government and that's on the public record. As I said, there was a, a, um, a, an update to previous projections published in uh, December and those projections do take into account um, our best Estimates, projections are, you know, in part informed guesses of the nature of future economic development, including the nature of any um, new industrial plants or mines or other aspects that come on board, and then um, the gap between the emissions that will be produced and to meet a target um, are part of the government's consideration in designing the policies to close that gap. Okay, so, you so but that's in general terms. As to the specific application of the Act itself, um, I think really. Um, Secretary, that's matters best okay. addressed to the people yeah. who administer Look, that Look, it act. doesn't relate to the Act, because as we just established, the climate has very little relevance um, under the EPBC Act, more's the pity. My question was, is there someone that is advising the Minister and the Government more broadly on um, whether or not the emissions from approving these mega coal mines will then make it impossible to meet a 5 per cent reduction target that the Government claims to be committed to? Um, well, without going to the specifics of advice that we provide to government, um, we certainly, through particularly through projections exercises, provide advice about Australia's likely emissions in the future and the extent to which policy needs to move to close the gap to meet the government's stated minus 5 per cent target. And, and in those projections, you factor in the approvals of those mega coal mines and any ones that are coming down the line or just ones that have already been approved? We, we do our, ba our best to factor in what's likely to happen, but that is a, it is a, um, Two uh, um, it, I should reinforce projections are just exactly what they sound like. They are our, in, you know, let me call them an informed guess about mm -hmm. what project, what um, emissions will look like in the future, mm -hmm. but they are matters we consider informing those projections. Okay. Now you mentioned your projections earlier um, and I might have misconstrued you, but did you say that you did in fact include the emissions from the burning of the coal from those mega mines when it's exported in no. your projections? Um, no, sorry, I think, yes. Yeah. Um, um, the emissions I'm talking about are the emissions that Australia is responsible for, okay. so it's the, any okay. emissions from combustion here or any emissions that might be associated, fugitive emissions that might be associated with the uh, extraction of, of um, um, coal in this case, um, or any electricity use that's also associated with that. So um, okay, that's so the production-based method of emissions that we use globally. All countries Correct. report on that basis. So you're not tracking the emissions produced from the coal that is exported from, say, the Galilee Basin? Um, other, other parties do estimate, if you like, consumption-based estimates, which I think is a little closer to what you're talking uh, about. or, or, um, or um, estimates that sort of try and measure emissions from a different perspective, but no, the, the department tracks emissions based on it's what it's in and what the Australia's international obligations are, and that's mm. what the, the basis under which the projections are published. If coal is exported to another country and combusted in that country, then that is the emissions that sure. in that country. So we're not tracking, country's. this is my final question, Chair, so we're not tracking the effect of those mega coal mines on the climate when they're exported? And we're not looking at the environmental impacts of uh, the climate impacts of those coal mines under our environmental laws, and yet you're somehow advising the government how to meet a five percent target. That seems to be a little um, artificial to me. Uh, the difficulty, Senator, is that uh, we don't know what, uh, what 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 other emissions would be displaced by uh, by, by the coal that we export whether it's a, a more, more emissions intensive uh, activity or, or source, of, source of power. So th there are a lot of, uh, uh, lot of conjectures would go into trying to understand what that analysis is. Mm.